uh, talk about how to recognize and identify significant figures using these rules that are here. We'll look a little bit further. All right. First thing, all non-zero digits are significant. What's a non-zero digit? Any number that's non-zero. Any a digit is nine through is zero through nine. That's a digit. So a non-zero digit is one through nine. And it can be strung a bunch of them together. Nine thousand four hundred and forty would be a bunch of non-zero digits in one number. But those are non-zero digits. So I don't remember what I said, but let's say 4,582 milliliters. One of the things in chemistry class, we do not write numbers that don't have letters to follow. Okay? Letters always follow. That identifies what that number is referring to. That 4,582 might be miles. It might be bushels. It could be people. It could be anything. Unless I, and I have, to, I have to identify what it is. And that's where the units are coming The units are super glued to that number, and wherever that number goes, that unit goes. Okay? Numbers are super glued to the units are super glued to the number. All right, so how many significant figures are there in that number? There are four. There are four. The four are significant, five, six, eight, and two. All of them are non zero digits. So that makes it easy. Now, this rule, zeros are what's going to be the bane of your existence. Means it's going to mess you up for a little while, while we learn. So this one says, zeros between two significant figures are significant. So what are some, uh, some and I call them between. Notice it doesn't say zeros between non-zero digits. It says numbers between significant figures. Sometimes you have zeros that are between a non-zero digit and significant zeros and that makes them between the two. They are significant. Okay, so I'll explain uh, as I go along. All right, so four, zero, five, how many significant figures? Three. The zeros are significant because they are between two significant figures. The four is significant and the five. All right, so... How many significant figures? How many? Six, three, two, one, four. Again. Six. There are six significant figures. It does not matter if I have one zero between two significant figures or I have 5,000 zeros between two significant figures. They're still significant. Okay? It doesn't matter how many of them are. Alright, so how many significant figures are there now? Still six. Is that five still significant? Is that seven still significant? Are those zeros still between that five and that seven? At all. So no matter where I put that decimal, as long as the zeros oops, as long as the zeros are between two significant figures, they are still significant. Okay? Now, what's wrong with my two numbers I wrote up here? They're not followed by letters, so they would have some kind of letters behind them in order to be complete. Okay? Now, the bigger bear one comes at number three. And it's also a bear because sometimes you have to go back and re revisit number two when you finish number three. Number three says, zero between 
rows trailing a decimal, and if that's only if they're at the very end of the number, are significant. Z rows trailing a decimal are significant. Only Z rows at the very end of the number. All right, so. How many significant zeros? Three, two, three, five, four. Mark. Which one do we know for sure before we ever start, start thinking about the zero? We know the five and the two. Now we have to look at the zero that we come to it. Is this a trailing at the end of the number zero? No. Is this a trailing at the end of the number zero? Is it at the end of the number? No. Is a trailing at the end of the number zero? No. Not. Is this a trailing at the end of the number zero? Yes. So it is significant. We have to have a decimal. And it has to be at the end for it to be significant. Say it again. Point zero, zero, zero. I don't care how many zeros I put. Six zeros. How many significant figures? Two. Are these first four zeros at the trailing end of a decimal number? Remember, decimal is important and end of the number. So the only zero that is significant is the last. All right, what about if we do uh, 500 miles? Is there a decimal? No. So that number three doesn't apply anyway. The only time you can apply number three is when you see a decimal. When you see a decimal, you can apply number three. No decimal, trailing zeros are not significant. Now, the, the zeros on this number, this number, and these zeros on that number are what you call placeholders. Without those zeros, where's that decimal going to fall down to? Next to the five, isn't it? Without those zeros, would the decimal be right by the five? Is that the same number? No. Without these zeros, where does this understood decimal fall? Next to the five, does it? So would that change my number? Oh, yeah. I would love to borrow $500 from you and then pay you back $5 because I only borrowed one different figure. But those zeros are important, but they are not missing. They serve a purpose. A key to zero of a decimal at where it's supposed to be. But it does not influence the number of people. All right? Now, I can force a zero to be significant by adding a decimal to a whole number. And I only add it to a whole number that ends in a zero. Do you write down that you're 16 dot years old? No, you write 16 or 17 or whatever age you are. So that's not usual. So if I have 500 and I want to have three significant figures for some reason, sometimes you need to meet it, you would put a decimal right there. That's not a usual thing to do. You went to extra place. Now, is there a decimal in this number? Or there trailing zeros? Yes, those two zeros are trailing now, aren't they? And there is a decimal in the number. So that makes all three numbers significant. So all three of those numbers are significant because I have forced you to realize that I wanted those zeros to be significant. But I measured it to the nearest whole mile. If I sent you out in your car and I 
I said, I want you to measure how far it is from here to town. How many significant figures do you think you get? How many decimal places do you think you get? What is your odometer? What do you need? Most of the time. The nearest tenth of a mile. So if you look at your odometer, let me clear this up a little bit. So I look at my odometer and it says 5,280. And then I have up here in the box, I see the bottom part of the 7 and the top part of the 8. How far is, how far have I tracked in my cross? How would you write that down? All right, so 5,280 points. What? Those numbers over there on that little box are five point seven. Because I haven't gotten to point eight yet, have I? Point seven, and now I have to have a what? An estimated digit. All the numbers I know for sure plus one estimated digit. What's my estimated digit? Five. Yeah. You wouldn't see the whole seven or the whole eight, so you'd see some part of it. And based on how much of it you saw, you decide whether what you best you are the best. All the numbers you can read off of your instrument plus one estimated digit. How accurate your instrument was. So your odometer measures to the tenth of a mile and you estimate to the hundredth of a mile. Look at your odometer when you get your car. How many of you drive? The number of you up. When you're doing your learner's permit, watch your odometer. Good luck going on. All right? So, Let's 